Good morning slash afternoon slash evening. Hello. Powerful that one, then. Yeah. That intro. Yeah. I don't like that one. You prefer sup? Yeah, sup just gets you straight in there. Oh. Oh. Sup. Powerful nonsenses. Are you Is that on, better? Are you on Do Not Disturb mode? I, I've just put my phone on silent and just flick that off. That was powerful stuff. You just did it in the pocket, like ping, done. You know, I just... No messing about. Professionals, uh, as we are. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm pro. Good man. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, so welcome to episode 130 of Powerful Nonsense. These numbers are cracking up, Jim. I know, it's... I feel like we've been podcasting a lot lately. I feel we went like... from doing nothing to like, in the last few days we've done about how many episodes? Five? Yeah. Craziness. Like, it is getting intense. It's kicking off. But they're cracking up, cranking up. We're cranking them out, hopefully the quality's still there. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of talking of which... <laughs> The episode today is staying competitive through care. Exactly. Um, we are caring for you guys. Oh, yeah. Should we let people know who we are first? Yes. So they can know who is that. caring for them. Let's do that. Right. <laughs> I like what you did there. Uh, so I am Wayne Ingram. I am Jamie Ordiz. And we are the Path Nonsense crew. And I just thought to myself, I actually didn't put our name tag. Oh, no, I haven't edited in the most recent ones. I was thinking. Oh, when you were like bitching at me, being like, oh, well, I don't know where to put the name tags. And you yeah, don't... yeah, yeah. But thought, you haven't edited it yet. No, so I thought in my head, oh crap, I didn't put the name tags in from last time, but then I... Okay, it's fine, just relax. Just remember to put them in. I'll get them in. Good, I'm cool. glad. I'm glad we settled that. Yeah, I just needed to just tell myself in my own mind to remind <laughs> myself to do that. But we're good. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go into the episode. <laughs> let's, let's get cracking. <laughs> um, so, this is, this is... I've been watching a lot of Gary Vee a lot recently. As and this do. is probably a very Gary V centric conversation. Oh, people must hate that, like, switch off now, because everybody's just copying Gary V. Yeah, but, I mean, because he knows what he's talking about. He does. Right? And, and this is one of his big things, is about just caring about what you do and caring about the people that you do it for. Um, and how doing that is going to give you so much leverage in terms of well, everything, just all of your interactions with it, whether that's customers, whether that's other people, whether that is uh, your services that you're providing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it's just getting so much more important these days to just have that competitive edge over. It's not necessarily now about being the best mm-hmm. so much as being the one that people want to go to Yeah, more than... I mean, obviously, quality is important, right? In terms of what it, whatever it is that you're looking yeah. at and, and being good at it, whatever it is, um, <laughs> is really important. But what can often give you the edge over anybody else that's also really good at it is... Um, sorry, I went off on my own head then. Uh, is that care? Yeah. And I think a lot of the time, I think, like, if you, where you mentioned Gary Vee there... I think he talks about like his old days at Wine Library and how he used to like mm-hmm. go through Twitter like messaging people one by one. And actually, I've been doing that lately with my food store. Just anybody right. on Instagram that actually talks to you, talk back to them, have a conversation. Yeah. And it's those things that are really they initially they look like a pain in the ass, mm-hmm. but they're the things where people get that interaction, or it's that time you spend chatting to a customer. Like right. you say, you have to have a good product in place, but the caring and like enough to actually give people your time whatever that is on Instagram, I think a lot of the time people want to find these little hacks and how they can kind of get customers or get mm-hmm. sales, but it's kind of all these little digital technical tweaks. But actually, I think the number one way you can do that is actually through, like you say, caring about someone enough that you're going to go that extra mile. Right. You're going to deliver stuff that has nothing to do with your product sometimes. Maybe you're just referencing like books that somebody should read or you're having a conversation about... I mean, I was chatting to someone the other day just about, like, they're moving into a new home and how's that right. going and opening up that conversation. It, it, it looks like it's a metric that you probably couldn't, like, define as, okay, mm-hmm. I spoke to this many customers or I said this to that many people, but there's no script there. It's kind of just, right. do you know what? I'm happy that you're coming to my store to have some food and I want to see how your day's going. I want to find out about you. And I think right. sometimes those are the things you cannot measure. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, it's going to be a much more, I reckon business centric episode this episode Mm -hmm. but i think it also applies to so much other stuff as well but i think it's just easier to talk about it in terms of in terms of business yeah but it could be in your work that you do as well it's in your work that you do it's in the work that you do it's in the colleagues that you talk to it's your relationships with your friends and family exactly it's all applicable but i think it's just a lot easier to talk to it talk about it in terms of 
uh, entrepreneurship and business and all that sort of stuff. So, mm-hmm. so apologies if it does get very business centric, but just try and like switch <laughs> it to make it relevant to whatever uh-huh. issue you kind of is important to you. I uh, think it on, on t- touching on that, I think if you just go back to any sort of human motivation, I think that's the core of it. It's kind of like what wakes you up in the morning, what like what issues have like impacted your life you always find that Mm. people who go out and do a certain course like you get people who decide to be a doctor and then they became a doctor because that somebody saved their parents life in hospital or then you've got somebody who um i don't know just different kind of issues that have come up in that person's life or they've helped the homeless volunteer and suddenly they want to start a business that helps the homeless a magazine that now homeless people can sell and I think that all kind of motivation comes from initial something, a catalyst has happened that has now made that person care on a deeper level than right. maybe everybody else. And I think nowadays you get a lot of people going to go talk about business. You get a lot of people starting businesses with the idea that, oh, this could make me a lot of money. But it's actually the businesses that tend to kind of go forward and do better than anybody else are the ones that actually started with that catalyst right. of care. Like it's yeah. kind of even like social enterprises are always like, People think, oh, you're going to start a charity or like a social enterprise, which is kind of like not really profit driven. You're not really going into this to make loads of money. But actually, this is what people have in mind. Okay, because I need to call you out on something there. Go on, because I'm going to come. Because social enterprise is about making money and it is about making profit. No, but that's what I'm saying. But that people think that if you do a social enterprise, you're not fully like you're not kind of oh, maximizing. The, the brand profit. of social enterprise, yeah. you mean, is yeah, right. the brand of social enterprise is that you're not trying to maximize profit mm-hmm. because you've still got this caring element which is going to cost you, right? And so, for me, and it's actually couldn't be further from the truth, it I'd couldn't say be further from pr- pr- tr- the truth nowadays, anyway. Because, like we're saying there, if you're somebody who now is creating something where you're caring beyond any other person, mm-hmm. like the care becomes your market, and it doesn't have to be right. a huge amount of money spent because you are so specific in a niche that you totally care about you take total responsibility for this issue Mm -hmm. and people know you as that person to go to in that space that actually your caring is the thing that's going to actually make you even more profitable than anybody else right i mean let's look at uh next door to where we record i think is a prime example of this yeah um and and part in some ways your new food venture as well Mm -hmm. um but uh, next door to where we record, the Feel Good Cafe in Chingford, uh, the guy that runs it, it's a vegan cafe selling vegan food, which in itself is, you know, a good marketing mm-hmm. thing because it's, you know, in the zeitgeist at the moment. Uh, but also, like, you when you talk to Idan, who runs the place, like, he is really passionate about making people healthy mm-hmm. and making sure they're living a healthy lifestyle. And that's the difference, I think. And that's why I'd go to uh, Idan versus another sort of vegan place if I was like, I'm in vegan food. Because I know that if I say, "Mm, I'm kind of feeling a little bit iffy around this area and a little bit iffy around that area, he'd be like, right, well, then what you need is this, 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 and this, because that will work this way, this way, and this way. Because he knows his stuff because he Mm -hmm. really wants people to be healthy. And I think that's such a huge difference versus somebody that's like, oh, veganism's in at the moment, so it's going to make me a lot of money, so I'm just going to sell vegan food. Yeah. Think, As an example. Yeah, I think that's the idea. It's being more like you're not it's not putting all the emphasis on the product, it's actually on the bigger picture. It's like that people say like you mark with the worldview that you want that person to have. So if you come in and you want to be healthy, he knows how to sell you like he doesn't sell you his product directly, but he right. uses the kind of I don't know, his 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 own experience, his love, like the guy cured his own health issues that he had through eating good food and he's like wow this worked for me how can I help you become the most flourishing right. human you can possibly be and you feel that when you talk to him he like is always complimenting he's always mm-hmm. makes you feel have a lot of energy and you feel good and that you want to buy the food for him and it's kind of like a secondary thing he even sometimes says like pay what you want or sometimes he says that and it's kind of more he gets so much pleasure out of selling you that food right. that he knows is going to nourish your health right and that's why people come to him yeah it's not they don't, I mean, obviously they're coming to him because they want vegan food because that's what he's selling. But he gets so much, like, loyalty mm-hmm. because of the way that he chooses to run his business through care and through caring about what he does and who he's selling it to that it makes you want to go back. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, with something like social enterprise, it's very easy to kind of go, oh, well, that's just a charity, right? Um, and it's not, it's so, so different because it is fundamentally a business, but one of the fundamental parts to the business structure is this compassionate 
caring aspect and wanting to make a social difference. And I think a lot of this has to come down to technology and the internet because I think yeah. nowadays, I think your your business is so transparent now. Yeah. People want to know, okay, why are you doing this? I mean, even with my um, vegan food um, still that I created, I've had a couple of people saying, oh, so you vegan then? And I was like, oh yeah, I am, but I've only been for five months. And they're like, oh, I thought you were just like someone taking advantage of the vegan like trend. Right. Yeah. And it's kind of that idea. It's like people are so conscious that they... Oh, are you doing this for the right, like, mo- have you got the right motivations for why you're doing this? And I think, especially young people nowadays, they're kind of looking into why you do something. And I think mm-hmm. um, that's going to become more common now. And I think yeah. you can see that in someone like the adverts that are coming up online. I, yeah. I, I always keep referring to it, but McDonald's have got this sort of set of adverts where they're trying to make it so family orientated. Like, oh, mm-hmm. we bring families together. Right. It's nothing to do with the food anymore. It's like, look, this is somewhere where you come to when you've had a great day and you want to bring your family or you want to take your part. Like, even, like, bring your dates to or you meet a new partner. <laughs> I, don't think I'd ever t- I don't think I'd ever take a date to I know, but they McDonald's. kind of play on that. Like, they've got adverts where, like, um, young couples you are kind of... Like, young people are sitting at different tables and they, like, meet each other and, like, oh, hi, and, like, bumping into each other. So it's kind of like they're trying to sell that McDonald's kind McDonald's of... should release their own Tinder app. Basically. Everybody that's in McDonald's just swiping right. Oh, God. <laughs> Be a state. <laughs> <sighs> but, yeah, but I think that com- people are getting to know that, but then people are being able to see through some of the bullshit that's going on. Well, that's it, isn't it? Like, you can see through that in an instant. Mm-hmm. Sorry, McDonald's, we are picking on you. Please don't, like, sue us or anything. Yeah, yeah. But, but, like, it's it's disingenuous. And it's, it's, it's because they're kind of like, oh, well, we know people... The dating thing is big at the moment yeah. um, because of the likes of Tinder and stuff. And they're trying to get the young crowd in because they can see that the young crowd's going very health conscious. So they're yeah. kind of like, how can we encourage people to come in? Yeah. Um, and I think a lot I'd of businesses never, are doing never it. take a date to McDonald's. I don't think, like, completely around dating. It was more like... <laughs> the advert was more like a group of boys right. and a group of girls oh, okay. and one of the guys bumps into a girl and they like me and like and it's oh, all so really awkward and yeah, somebody yeah. drops something yeah. and it's all like, and like oh, love it, at like, first oh, sight exactly that sort of yeah. thing but a lot of businesses are <laughs> doing this and I think what's happening you're getting businesses that are starting with care at their core and then you've right. got business who kind of like trying to bolt on the care to what was yeah. already there and that's the difference isn't it Yeah, it's the ones that are built around caring and then the ones that are kind of like oh we should probably care a little bit more <laughs> yeah it's literally that way of thinking and I think that's what sort of is and I think people are seeing that they're seeing when like mm-hmm. I don't know like even like Barclays Bank, I'm not gonna. This is another one who kind of stop now, throwing out all these. But, but I'm just these are, these are just can, examples. When you like, edit them, can you please beat these out? Okay, but okay. There's a bank. I'm nervous. There's a certain bank that's doing like adverts, <laughs> but they've been like helping. Like they, what they're doing is good, but it's kind of like a bolt onto what their product is. And I think they know that. So with Barclays, they're doing like these um, Barclays Eagles, where I think they were helping like older people learn about technology, mm-hmm. so they can use online banking, which is a great thing. But I think it's kind of like. They're finding how do we add care to our current product. Yeah. And I think that's where I find it's like, okay, it's interesting how businesses are changing. And I think it Mm -hmm. is because of that awareness. And I think they know that I think marketing nowadays has switched from just can it be seen to actually people want to know that you're an ethical company doing good. Right. And I think if you can start, if you whatever you do, I'm sure, whether it's your course, whether it's your job you actually do, I'm sure you'll stay in your job if you feel that you're connected to the cause. Right. And I'm sure you'll start a business and you'll persevere, persevere through all the tough times if at your core you care enough. And mm-hmm. then I think that, that way when you come up against stuff is to kind of like not that idea of, oh, th- this isn't as profitable as I hoped it to be. It's more like, okay, I care about this cause so deeply that I'm just going to keep going mm-hmm. until I make it a success. And I think that... Yeah, that, that, that is the key, the key difference, I think, isn't it? It's all about how much is the cause important to you yeah. uh, whether it's a worker or as a business owner um we're coming up to the halfway point so i think we'll take a break yes. and then we shall come back with some more caring goodness sounds good good so we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor yep. the university of northampton huge thank you to them for supporting the show um so why should you check them out well first of all we're we alumni there. we yes. went there so everything that we kind of delivered to you, it kind of comes from them in a way. Um, But also, they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also 
there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, <laughs> it's not just about setting up a business. It's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And a huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Sup. Hello, we're back. So I went with sup this time on the mid bit, mid bit, just for you, Jim. Shaking things up. <laughs> Keeping you on your toes. Um, okay, so we're talking about how you can stay competitive through care. And we talked about a lot of the importance of why you should care. So let's talk about how you can care. How you can care. How you can care more. Um, I think in terms of like caring, I think... I think a lot of the time people already have like things that have happened in their lives that have caused, like I said earlier in the episode, that things that you have you have happened to you mm-hmm. that have impacted your life that now cause you to care about certain aspects more than maybe somebody else you know. And I think one thing for me that I find really, really valuable, for, especially for young people, is volunteering. I think what I like about volunteering is that you do something, you're giving your time, and I think it puts you in a, in a new worldview. It's like if you go and work with orphans you're going to have a new perspective of how that system works or how people who who are in that predicament are feeling i think it kind of opens you up to different um ways of looking at things if you go and feed the homeless at christmas time suddenly you've got your mind thinking you know i really care about these homeless people you might start giving more money to homeless people you see and i think i was listening to a, pod, a podcast the other day and it's saying that we basically have these sort of empathetic um receptors in our brain that actually wire us more to certain issues so i know for you um, you were saying a few, uh, I don't know how many episodes ago, but like with mental health, it's an issue that you're really passionate yeah. about. To me, I haven't had uh, like a complete direct experience of mental health right. issues, so I'm going to be less compassionate about it than you are, and you're going to have more passion. So like when you put your theatre show on, it had mm-hmm. a mental health basis to it. Yeah. And that's your way of being more competitive through care, is that you're going to put more into it because you've experienced it before. And I think it's sort of that double-edged thing where actually... In some ways, it seems like, oh, we're just doing it because it's affected us before. But actually, that's the way we work as humans right. and the fact that things impact us. And that impact helps us to help everybody else who's been in that situation before because yeah. we want to find ways to, I know, help other people. It's the same reason why um, how many people run the London Marathon for like cancer research. Right. It's because they've heard about an uncle, a partner, a friend or somebody who's experienced cancer. And yeah. so they are running that, that long 26 miles right. or whatever it is marathon that they do and I think it's that same idea it's that people are more passionate and are going to kind of be more empathetic towards these things Mm -hmm. if they've experienced it themselves yeah and that's the thing is like if you're if you're in a position which I think is kind of what you're saying if you're in a position where you are already passionate about this particular cause or you know again whatever it is if it's just a particular type of business if you just if you just care about that industry enough or whatever it's going to be a difference maker anyway just because you're going to put f- so much more into it because like you say oh yeah run 10k wayne and i'm like oh, no you say run 10k uh and you know raise money for mind mm-hmm. which is a mental health charity and i go uh, it completely changes my perspective because yeah. I'm kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, that's actually a good chance for me to make a bit of a difference on that. But just doing it for the sake of doing it is just kind of like no. Yeah. But because there's there's something that it's go- that it's going towards and it's something that I do have a passion about, suddenly that changes everything. And I think that's the thing as well to consider when you are setting up your own business or again whatever it is that you're pursuing on some level is just care enough about it. Mm -hmm. like and and really like it's this thing like i'm I'm, again it's a very gary v centric episode so i can't help but think of some things that that gary v says but like doing shit you hate is a waste of your time really Mm -hmm. you may as well do something that you're really really passionate about and do it in a way that makes you even more passionate about it Mm -hmm. because you know it's so easy to kind of go again as we said at the beginning of the episode oh well this is gonna make money for me but you know what you're really not gonna put in the legwork Mm -hmm. when the money's not coming in if if the money is the only thing that you actually care about in that situation that's not going to be enough for you yeah um 
uh, and I think that's that's the difference maker for a lot of things. Yeah, and I think a lot of people who already care about something, like just deep diving in deeper on that thing you care about, just about is, to an, say is an incredible thing to do. Because if you're someone who cares about sustainability issues, maybe mm-hmm. you buy a eco-friendly t-shirt but then if you then went and traveled to that place who produced the eco-friendly t-shirts and see the impact of non-eco-friendly t-shirts right. have on blah, blah, blah on the environment suddenly you now have a way deeper empathetic sort of receptors firing off saying okay this issue goes way deeper than i currently thought it's the same thing around the whole like veganism thing even me trying now going vegan eating vegan food is the idea you watch a documentary and you didn't have to physically travel to the places to hear this stuff but you mm-hmm. watch something and it changes your current worldview of how you see maybe the uh, commercial food industry. Right. And it's that same thing, you take a deep dive. It's about self-education. Yeah. I think a lot of it. And I think, again, that will be the difference maker because you get so, you, you find what it is that you care deeply about and then you educate yourself on it. And, you know, that's so much easier now than it's ever been with the likes of the internet. I mean, obviously be very careful where you source your information from. Um, but that's also, I think, where... You know, I, I almost think like it's we encourage uh, teenagers to go to university at like 18. And it's like, do they actually know what they're passionate about yet? I'm one of the lucky few. I've always known what I've been passionate about. I but, think people have passions by that age, but I think there's not enough. I think a lot of the time young people have passions for certain topics, yeah. but they don't see the monetary possibility or the right. job. No one says that, oh, because you care about animals, you can never make money in that industry. Right. And I just think it's probably it's almost better to delay the study, find, use a few years of your adult life to work out what you're passionate about, and then... Because there are so many, so many people I know that are going back to university because they think they're like, oh, this is something that actually... I've fallen into a career into it that I'm really, really passionate about. I want to self-educate myself on that, mm-hmm. that area. Um, but I do think technology does allow the young... I think nowadays younger people, like back in the day, maybe we, we might have been passionate about a subject, but we couldn't research and explore it as much mm-hmm. as, say, a young person nowadays can mm-hmm. online. So they can actually get quite a deep dive from their bedroom, yeah. basically. Yeah, and then, and then I think where where the formal education comes in is then kind of taking that and going, yes, this is definitely something that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then kind of going, right, now let's go into formal education because what the formal education provides over, you know, the internet deep dive is you manage to get industry connections, you're doing proper, proper research from (laughs) reliable sources because it's academic study as opposed to just whatever Wikipedia throws. (laughs) Wikipedia always getting knocked. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Wikipedia, yeah. but, but it's but questionable. The point you said there, which I think is really, really important for people to know, is that if you care enough about a subject, like the network will open up to you. Mm-hmm. I think like when you generally care about a topic and you're someone who's maybe putting out content on that topic or you're doing video blogs, suddenly you've tapped into a network and it works so much in your favour. If you find someone who's 30 years ahead of you who has a business in sustainability and you're a young person who suddenly got interested in creating t-shirts that are eco-friendly mm-hmm. suddenly you're gonna these people can be so passionate like because you have the same mindsets and you think similar and you have the same passions and you care enough about a subject that person's gonna then find ways to help you so i found that whenever you care about something enough like the people around you want to support that yeah. to flourish so yeah i think like use that in your in your advantage that people people who yeah think alike like mm-hmm. want to help each other yeah uh, and I think you'll often be surprised when you do find something that you are passionate about, particularly if it is something like a social cause, um, if you're setting up a social enterprise or something like that, is you'll quickly realise that a lot more people care about it than you probably thought mm-hmm. did because they'll just gravitate towards you. Yeah, and I think like speaking to those people as well because they've already done a lot of the research and then they might be able to kind of highlight mm-hmm. a gap that you haven't seen before. And that might become your social enterprise. That might become your business. That might become the root of the career you want to go down. Now you want to find a way that you knew that this person has been researching this for like 50 years and has said, well, actually, this is the cause now that's causing the rest of the stuff to happen. And suddenly you say, well, actually, if I can just do one little thing in there, mm-hmm. suddenly you've got your business idea. It's going to help. And I think... Yeah, I think, yeah, networking with those sort of people is so important. That's it, and it's about being open to it as well. It's about making sure, like, almost on the more basic level of, of caring about what you do, you've kind of got to be really open You and, and actually not almost... As an example, I, I met a guy who was 
really passionate about um, online marketing for actors. Really passionate about it. And it was wonderful to see the passion, but he was so standoffish because it was almost, you could almost see the chip on his shoulder because it was more about, I've got something to prove as opposed to, I actually really care about making sure you are marketed the best that you can be as an actor. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So it was actually, it wasn't so much about caring. He cared a lot about the subject. You could tell that from a mile off, but it was almost like, whoa, because he was so, it was pushy sales as opposed to like, I actually want to make sure that I can market market you the best that you can be. Does that make sense? And I think that's also a huge difference. Like I think if you're passionate about the subject, that's one thing but you also have to be passionate about what you're delivering that to or who you're delivering that to. Mm-hmm. Because if it's only a one-way street, it's going to it's gonna alienate rather than... Mm-hmm. Um, like, let's talk about... I don't want to bash too much, but we actually had this conversation um, the other day about mm-hmm. the, the vegan brand. Oh, yeah. And how I don't appreciate often how alienating the vegan thing can be because yeah. people are so kind of like, well, you eat meat, therefore you're a bad person. And it's like, okay, I get you're passionate about the subject, but don't what you, where you come from is more the kind of like, I'm passionate about the subject, but I'm also passionate about making sure that people are eating healthier yeah. as opposed to making people feel bad yeah. because they eat meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the difference. Yeah, no, definitely. There's all that disconnect really. Uh-huh. People kind of, Rather than, because I think that happens a lot with people who have a subject they care about, it becomes so much their identity. Right. Rather than actually say, actually, I'm doing this because I know it's like a double benefit impact. I care about this enough, but it's because I care about it, I'm going to help loads of people. I'm going to have an impact on a lot of other people's lives because of my care for this thing. Yeah. Rather than my life revolves around me being Uh a vegan. And that's it. And I think it's so difficult. It's so easy, rather, to feel like you're the only one that cares about that subject. Mm-hmm. And I think it's very easy, therefore, to kind of get on your high horse about something. I care more than you. Yeah, and I, and I think that's the wrong... I'm Though I'm saying, like, be really competitive through care, but don't think you're the only person that cares. Yeah. Because you're, you'll then alienate people. So you've got to... It's almost like you've got to invite people into the fold rather than just kind of, like, plant your flag in the ground and be like, this hell is mine! Yeah. <laughs> you have to be much more kind of like, please, come in, let's talk, let's... Um, Let's see if we can change things. Mm-hmm. And I just think, like, finally, like, I know we're going to wrap up soon, is just think of how much, uh, like, caring for something impacts your personality, you as a person. Mm-hmm. I generally think it opens up the world to you when it, it adds another layer to you as a person. I think when you get chatting to people, it's so yeah. nice not to have that sort of, uh, like, that top surface, shallow conversation. Once you get to the core of someone, you can actually find about the things they care about. And I think that really opens up the personality yeah. of somebody. And that's where people are going to want to help you. Yeah, I definitely agree. Cool. Cool. So let's wrap it up there. Yeah, there's one. Oh, yeah. There was just one nice little point in there. And I think that it's just one point I thought worth mentioning is this idea of chasing money or chasing impact. And Mm. I think if you care about something enough, both will come. You'll have an Mm. impact and the money can come too. And that's that's not a bad thing. Yeah. And so, yeah, Yeah. forward. No, that's a chuck that point in there. Very, very good point. Um, That was, that feels like. I don't know about you, but that feels like that has been a big episode. There was a lot there. There's a lot there. And hopefully it didn't sound like we were just repeating the same thing, but I think we came through a many lot different of, angles of A lot of caring. zigzagging, yeah. crisscrossing. Yeah. But yeah, I think there is a lot in there. So uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Um, if you like what we're talking about, please leave a comment. Engage in the conversation with us because we want to talk to you guys as well. We talk at you a lot, but we don't talk with you a lot. So please talk to us. Uh, so leave a comment on YouTube, Facebook, on the blog post, whatever. Uh, you can find episode breakdown at powerfulnonsense.com forward slash 130. Um, and yeah, hit that subscribe button on YouTube or iTunes and we will be eternally grateful. Cool. So thanks very much for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you next time.